let's see. Where do we want to start here? Let's talk with the, about the election a little bit. How do you feel like the upcoming election is going to um, impact the market? What historically has the market done? Are we talking like Richardson High School Student Council? Uh, that's the one. So specifically <laughs> for Richardson, how does the local election uh, ha, affect? Ha, nope, ha. let's talk about the, uh, the national I election. don't know if you guys knew this, but there is a presidential election that's afoot about on the front. See, I call it a national election. That's how we refer to it in England. National yes. election, it's presidential a, there, election. Well, you're right. Because we're we'll, in England, we, right? Well, we will be oh. electing more than a president, so he's probably more right than me. I, as much as it pains me to say that, there will be senators and congressmen and all sorts of local elections and everything. So there is a, uh, a very, very important election coming up. Dare I say the most important election of our lifetime, the most worn out statement of every election cycle ever. Um, but now we've got we've got an election coming up, and yes, elections impact real estate markets. Now, here's the deal. It's interesting that every time we have a presidential election, uh, candidates say a lot of the same things, and believe it or not, candidates from multiple parties say a lot of the same things uh, because they want everyone to love them, and they want everyone to support them, and they want everyone to like their policies. And by all means, we have some candidates right now that aren't trying to get everyone's vote. They've just kind of hunkered down and said, look, this is the segment of the population whose vote I want and I have no problem ticking off everybody else. But the reality is housing is a massive driver of our economy in the United States of America. Therefore, all presidential candidates want to at least appear very much for a, a, a strong, vibrant housing market. Now, people come at that from different ways, whether it's eliminating debt, making debt highly available, offering tax incentives, coming at it from the home as the core of a healthy family, or lots of different ways. We're not going to get into policy. I'm not that smart. But we will say that generally speaking, housing does really well leading up to presidential elections because all candidates promise or indicate that they want to make decisions that would benefit housing, therefore drive a healthy economy. There really aren't at the moment any massive policy items that I would say are going to dramatically change our housing market, right? No one's, uh, no one's really lobbying yet for like nationwide transfer taxes, which by the way, some states have transfer taxes. Literally, it's 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 almost like paying sales tax when you sell a house. You know, you go buy a candy bar, you pay seven and a half, eight and a half, eight and a quarter percent local sales tax. Imagine if you went and sold a four hundred thousand dollar house and you had a seven or eight percent transfer tax. All of a sudden the value of real estate takes a huge hit because buyers and or sellers have to factor in another six or seven or eight percent and someone's got to pay that, right? Which means everyone's got to pay that. It's got to be factored into the deal. So no one's moving in that direction quite yet. Now I'll just throw this out there to tick some people off and keep it interesting. Yes. The Bernie momentum had people worried more about things like that, right? Kind of housing for all, let's tax the heck out of it and let's create revenue so that everyone can do everything, right? I'm not saying whether I'm for or against that, I'm not, uh, but that's the fear that our industry would have, right? On one hand, it's let's create more cost to the process. On the other hand, it's let's create like no barrier to debt, right? And I, I'm not a fan of either of those things in the extreme, right? Um, like everyone should be able to borrow whatever they need to get a house, not a great idea. Everyone should get whatever they want without having to put anything on the line, not a great idea, in my personal opinion. The point is neither of those like super turbo extremes as far as policy proposals is really out there in the housing world for this election, but Elections create uncertainty, and we talked a lot about uncertainty in the first half of the show. Uncertainty usually just creates slower uh, action, less, um, you know, less momentum, more hesitation in the marketplace. But because of COVID, because of uh, interest rates, because of low, uh, uh, very, very low supply, very high demand, I don't think that's going to have a negative impact on our market right now. I think it might actually help us. The more we create a little hesitation in the market, the more we actually create. A, a pace to that demand absorbing our supply. If that doesn't make sense, I think the election's gonna keep us right about where we are in our housing market. 
Yeah, so I actually have a follow-up question. There, there was a an article, this was from the last elections, this was from 2016, that said that they looked at, at data over the last 13 presidential elections, right. and it said that there was a, a dip somewhere in that 13 to 15% range in like the month of September. On the right. month of November, one of those two. November. I think. Well, I think it actually said September for okay. some reason, but then right. it begins to rebound. Whichever. Let's just say that that for some reason happened again. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's a potential for amazing opportunity for buyers right. to come in and get a great deal, or as a seller to jump in when there's no inventory. Right. Let me make a quick note. I am not a scientist, but somewhere there is a scientist on fire right now because of how siloed and narrow the, the, the view of that is. Hey, for the last 13 presidential election cycles, there's a downturn in September. Well, we just spent 20 minutes talking about back to school in August <laughs> and early September. There's about 74 <laughs> reasons that that's the case. And every four years, it might be a slightly more exaggerated. Hey, I mean, you got to love research papers, right? Right, right. Statistics can say whatever you want them to say. Yes. Pretty much. But but I'm sure there's some relevance that every fourth year, it's more, it's more you know, extreme than in others. Uh, and again, I would point mostly just to uncertainty, right? Now, if you look back on that data, there's a handful of election cycles that were dramatic because there were some of those policy proposals and there was some really significant, like in the Carter years, I mean, we, we had some significant economic challenges, right? Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to get into president's names and who dealt with what, but there were some really significant you know, near depression type stuff that happened. And of course, you add that to the uncertainty of an election cycle and you're going to get way more uh, slowdown in activity. Please don't challenge me on my presidential knowledge. Or I won't. Like that. I won't. Nor geography. Um, okay. So here's the deal. Um, the presidential election cycle will impact our market, but I don't think most people are going to notice it this year. I think this year there's so much de demand. There's so little supply. Interest rates are so favorable. Uh, and, 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 the coronavirus has checked our mar our total activity uh, that we're going to continue to see that unfold uh, until probably February before we see any noticeable difference.